Politico has this article here. Europe accuses U.S. of profiting from war. EU officials attack Joe Biden over sky-high gas prices, weapon sales, and trade as Vladimir Putin Putin's war threatens to destroy Western unity. So, um, that's kind of a it's kind of a crazy headline, right? It's like it's like accusing water of being wet. Oh my God, America's uh, war profiteering. Yeah, do you know anything about America? Do you remember that whole Iraq war thing? I mean, we have a track record of doing it, particularly post-World War II when we became the world's sole superpower. Um, this is what we do. When people talk about the military-industrial complex, that is something real. That is something tangible. So what that is, is you have so-called defense contractors, so these big, um, you know, defense corporations that sell weapon, that sell, like, firearms, tanks, fighter jets, uh, body armor, all stuff uh, revolving around war. Um, you have these companies give money to the politicians for their campaigns. These uh, politicians get elected, and then they turn around and serve those corporations and give them what's called a no-bid contract, which is like, we'll just pay you whatever the fuck you want us to pay you. And, um, y you know, you're, you have to make X number of tanks or X number of fighter jets. And by the way, there's great reporting a few years back how there are, I think it's tanks that are sitting in the middle of Nevada, and they're there because of these no-bid contracts, where basically it was just a, a giant slush fund for the military-industrial complex to make more money. And so this is a huge thing, and you're seeing it also now with the war in Ukraine, where we keep sending billions and billions and billions. There's been like 18 different packages where we send billions more to Ukraine. And a lot of this is just to enrich the military-industrial uh, complex. So let's give, uh, see the specifics they have here. Nine months after invading Ukraine, Vladimir Putin is beginning to fracture the West. Top European officials are furious with Joe Biden's administration and now accuse the Americans of making a fortune from the war while EU countries suffer. Quote, the fact is, if you look at it soberly, the country that is most profiting from this war is the U.S. Because they are selling more gas and at higher prices and because they are selling more weapons, one senior official told Politico. The explosive comments, backed in public and private by officials, diplomats, and ministers elsewhere, follow mounting anger in Europe over American subsidies that threaten to wreck European industry. The Kremlin is likely to welcome the poisoning of the atmosphere among Western allies. Quote, we rarely... We are really at a historic juncture, the senior EU official said, arguing that the double hit of trade disruption from U.S. subsidies and high energy prices risks turning public opinion against both the war effort and the transatlantic alliance. Quote, America needs to realize that public opinion is shifting in many EU countries. So look, what they're saying is, we see how much money you guys are making from the war. Um, so that's a, that's a bad incentive Another bad incentive is this just you just want to see Russia weakened and so if Ukraine is going to Russian is going to weaken Russia you cheer that on. But we are bearing the brunt of this entire thing because a lot of European countries got a lot of their oil and gas from Russia and now those that relationship has been cut off. So they have a short supply, prices have skyrocketed. They're talking about potential blackouts in the middle of the winter, right? Where the the power goes out. Um their economies are getting hammered, and so they are bearing the brunt of this war, and the U.S. is not. We have, again, people making money off of the war, and really it was only 6 or 7% of Russian oil and gas that came into the U.S., and we can more easily make up for that. Um, so this is a warning sign. They're like, we are going to turn on this fucking thing because it's hurting us quite a bit, and you guys don't seem to care. You guys seem to like it. This is the argument that's being made. Another top official, the EU's chief diplomat, Joseph Borrell, called on Washington to respond to European concerns. Quote, Americans, our friends, take decisions which have an economic impact on us, he said in an interview with Politico. The U.S. rejected Europe's complaints. Quote, the rising gas prices in Europe is caused by Putin's invasion of Ukraine and Putin's energy war against Europe, period. A spokesperson for Biden's National Security Council said, exports of liquefied natural gas from the U.S. to Europe increased dramatically and enabled Europe to diversify away from Russia the NSC spokesperson said. The biggest point of tension in recent weeks has been Biden's green subsidies and taxes that Brussels say unfairly tilt trade away from the EU and threaten to destroy European industries. Despite formal objections from Europe, Washington has so far shown no signs of backing down. 
At the same time, the disruption caused by Putin's invasion of Ukraine is tipping European economies into recession. With inflation rocketing and devastating squeeze on energy supplies, threatening blackouts and rationing this winter. As they attempt to reduce their reliance on Russian energy, EU countries are turning to gas from the U.S. instead, but the price Europeans pay is almost four times as high as the same fuel costs in America. Then there's likely the surge in orders for American-made military kit as European armies run short after sending weapons to Ukraine. It's all got too much for top officials in Brussels and other EU capitals. French President Emmanuel Macron said high U.S. gas prices were not friendly, and Germany's economy minister has called on Washington to show more solidarity and help reduce energy costs. Ministers and diplomats based elsewhere in the bloc voice frustration at the way Biden's government simply ignores the impact of its domestic economic policies on European allies. So really, we're pissing them off on every front. We're pissing them off when it comes to oil and gas. We're pissing them off when it comes to our weapons. We're pissing them off with our uh, investment in green technology. Every action that we're taking has a negative effect on them, and they're beginning to turn on us and turn on the war. When EU leaders tackled Biden over high U.S. gas prices at the G20 meeting in Bali last week, the American president simply seemed unaware of the issue. According to the senior official quoted above, other EU officials and diplomats agreed that American ignorance about the consequence for Europe was a major problem. Quote, the Europeans are discernibly frustrated about the lack of prior information and consultation, said David Kleiman of the Bruegel think tank. So look, this is something that we've seen time and time again, right? That um, when there's a war in Europe, the U.S. really... Um, has a lot of positive outcomes as a result of it because we are more isolated geographically. I mean, we have Canada to our north and we have Mexico to our south, but Europe is, is a giant mix of all these different countries with different languages and different cultures. And something that happens in Europe affects all of Europe, um, but it, it affects us much less. And so now we are the beneficiary of total chaos and war over there. And our allies don't like it. Now, one of the upsides of this, one of the silver linings of this is that it does make it much more likely that our European allies talk to Ukraine and tell Ukraine, hey man, um, it's time to talk. It's time to negotiate. It's time to try to find a way out of this war. And um, I mean, I think that's the right thing to do. Ukraine has a right to defend their territory. And if they decide to do that, um, perhaps nobody can stop them. That's fair enough. But Everybody should be looking for an off-ramp and looking to de-escalate because the, the stakes with the war like we're witnessing now are nuclear annihilation. People shouldn't forget that. Russia has nukes. And Putin, if he is getting defeated, and he feels like there's not even a face-saving maneuver there for him, a worst-case scenario could happen. So now with the economic crunch uh, in Europe and the devastation of the war and the U.S. basically benefiting as a result of it, um, the dynamics are changing. And I wouldn't be surprised if the wheels are in motion already, where, you know, there's a more direct line between other European governments and Putin, or other European governments and Zelensky, and, you know, the, uh, basically the blank check is becoming more and more of an issue. There was a time when the blank check was viewed as like, that's the popular thing to do. Now it's looking like uh, there's, for a number of compounding factors, the blank check is not the right thing to do, and it's not the popular thing to do. And Biden's blissfully unaware of all of it, as they reported in this article. So, um, wow, quite a story. Uh, and the U <laughs> Europe accusing the U.S. of war profiteering is like, yeah, we're the U.S. That's like kind of our whole thing. Go watch the, the documentary, Iraq for Sale, The War Profiteers, and your mind will be blown about just how grotesque the military industrial complex is. To give you one example, um, they would, uh, for our soldiers, just a regular like six pack of Coke went for like $40 or something like that. And that was all charged to the U.S. taxpayer. Um, they'd give these no big contracts to these uh, people with connections who would do the electrical at all the U.S. bases in Iraq. And then in some instances, the electrical was done in such a shoddy way that people would be, our soldiers would be electrocuted to death in the showers. This is what this war was. You have Hillary Clinton in emails telling people, oh, this is a, this is a profit-making opportunity, the war in Iraq. 
So, yeah, this is kind of what we do. It's, it's been what we do for decades now. But it's amazing that Europe's like, oh, oh, yeah, no, this, I don't like this. Yeah, <laughs> neither do I, neither do the American people, neither does anybody else. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.